Hello guys and welcome to a new video. In this video we're asking the question, can reverse electroplating be done with sodium bisulfate instead of sulfuric acid? And the short answer is yes it can. So the next question is, is sodium bisulfate a viable alternative to using sulfuric acid? Let's take a look and see what happens. I'll turn on the power supply and get started. And I'll put a clock up in the top right hand corner so you can see how long it takes. And whilst that is running I'll explain the equipment setup. On the left we have ADC power supply. It's a regular power supply with adjustable voltage and amperage. For this experiment I have it set at just over 10 volts and 5 amps. Here, the negative wire is attached to the cathode. For the cathode I opted for a graphite rod as graphite is inert and won't be damaged by the chemicals and it's also a good conductor of electricity. The positive wire is attached to the anode. The anode is the piece that we are trying to remove the gold from. In this case it is a heat sink from an old computer processor. For the electrolyte, I have dissolved 80 grams of sodium bisulfate into 200 milliliters of distilled water. I also have a small bowl there of water with a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate in it. This is to rinse the anode once it's done. This is used to neutralize the acid on the anode and prevent the acid from irritating my skin. While the cell is doing its work, let me explain what reverse electroplating or electrostripping as it's better known and the difference between this and electroplating. First, what is electroplating? Electroplating is a process by which metal ions migrate through solution from a positive electrode to a negative one. An electrical current passing through the solution allows objects at the cathode to be coated by the metal in the solution. Many products have electroplated parts. The most popular items include jewelry, automotives, and electronics. A car has numerous electroplated parts, including its bumpers, hubcaps, grills, and door handles. Electronic devices, including computers and smartphones, also have electroplated parts that allow for better conductivity of electrical current, as well as prevent overheating during charging. Once these devices have reached the end of their lives, a lot of them get thrown out and end up in landfill sites. By recycling these components and reusing the metals, we can reduce the amount of waste destroying our planet and at the same time, we can make some beautiful jewelry out of it. So, what is reverse electroplating? Reverse electroplating is just the opposite. The piece that you want to remove the gold from serves as the anode and the cathode reduces the metal ions that have been pulled from the anode. Most of the gold plating in computer components is typically plated onto copper. Copper is relatively cheap and a good conductor of electricity. The gold plating is usually added. For its corrosion resistance, this prevents the copper from oxidizing and the component failing. Because of this, when reverse electroplating computer components, the most common electrolyte used is concentrated sulfuric acid. Copper is quite resistant to concentrated sulfuric acid. This means that when it is used, the gold comes away from the piece as a fine black powder. The other benefit is that the acid can be used over and over again. Unfortunately for me, here in the UK, concentrated sulfuric acid is on a list of banned acids. To purchase sulfuric acid, the government has to issue you with a hazardous substance license. This was bought into effect due to an increase in people throwing acid in other people's faces. Because of this, I am trying to come up with a different solution. Let's take a look at what's happening in my experiment. The first thing that I have noticed is there is a lot of bubbling happening this is because oxygen is being produced at the anode and hydrogen is being produced at the cathode. Also, the electrolyte solution has turned a deep blue color. A blue colored solution usually means that there is copper in solution. 
If you look closely at the cathode, you will notice there is a large amount of copper being deposited there. When I've seen this process done with concentrated sulfuric acid, I've noticed there is a lot less bubbling. The solution doesn't turn blue and copper doesn't deposit so much at the cathode. Also, the gold comes off as a fine black powder. So, what can we conclude from this? Well, it looks as if the dilute acid is causing the copper underneath the gold plating. To be oxidized, this is allowing the copper to go into the solution, which is then deposited at the cathode. It's eating away at the copper behind the gold, which is coming away in little tiny flakes and mixing with the reduced copper. Using sulfuric acid, the gold would have been removed long before now and I would have gotten through a couple of these heat sinks. But we're at five and a half minutes, and we're not even halfway through the first one. I think I'll speed through a little, and you can see how long it actually takes. While that is speeding through, if you've enjoyed this video, give that like button a smash. If you want to see more gold recovery videos, or metal recycling videos, please subscribe and click the notification bell. As for this experiment, would I consider it a fail? The answer is no. I did manage to remove the gold using a sodium bisulfate electrolyte. Would I use this method again? Probably not. It's very time consuming for the very little gold that would be recovered. There you have it, 15 minutes to do one heat sink. Is it worth your time? That's for you to decide. Thanks for watching.